Hello everybody. This week in Euro paper land, Raoul's drug scandal, Matthias looking rosy, and what makes referees blow? No, telling them you love them first is not the answer. Let's start in Italy. Managerial news and the return of Emiliano Mondonico. Now, fans of Italian football back in the early 90s will be excited by this as they recall Il Mundo as the very man who took Torino to the UEFA Cup final and third place in Serie A, an achievement underlined by the fact that they've been in Serie B virtually ever since. Well, Mundo taking over uh, this week at Novara in the 12th managerial change this season in Serie A. What's especially impressive about this is the fact that it's less than a year ago that he retired from football to have a tumour removed from his stomach, a tumour weighing five kilos. Well, football's brought me back to life now, says Emiliano, and he must perform a similar trick on Navarra, who are currently lying in last place in Serie A. Intriguingly, the team immediately below them, i.e. on top of Serie B, is also managed by a relic of those glory years of culture, Zdenek Zeman. Zeman, of course, is an authentic footballing fundamentalist whose ultra-attacking formations have made him an increasingly niche figure in Italy, but he's now back on top of Serie B with Pescara, notching up this week a record sixth win in a row in a game in which he stunned observers by actually taking off a midfielder for a defender. Rest assured, though, that his team is as forward-thinking as ever, as the Gazetta reveals Pescara scoring record numbers of goals this season, and they have indeed the division's top scorer up front, the evocatively named Ciro Immobile. Fielding a man named Immobile up front doesn't seem to work too well for Liverpool, but there you go. Well, best of luck to Zdenek and Il Mundo, and on we move to Spain, where Jose Mourinho's I'm off to the Premier League bombshell last weekend drew a relieved Adios Mu from El Mundo Deportivo for the man El País this week called the most divisive figure in Spain since Franco. Other Spanish headlines this week, well, Mundo Deportivo again say Van Persie is loco for El Barça. Uh, the Madrid press, meanwhile, hailing uh, Mesut Ozil as the Wizard of Oz as Real goes seven points clear, while the Catalan papers in a similar theme, not giving a flying monkeys. Don't give up. Uh, the comeback is possible. Here's 10 reasons, says Sport, to believe in this Barca. This largely boils down to Messi's is a bit special. The rest of the team aren't bad too. And it's a new challenge. Excellent. Well, Germany next, where Bild have picked up on a big mafia and football inquiry in the August Scientific Journal interview. Uh, here it is, mafia and football listers. Uh, the uh, newspaper here quotes wiretaps in which Schalke's Spanish star Raul is named as a contact of an Iberian drugs lord called Loro. Not that Loro, I'm guessing. Uh, says Bild, is Raul under pressure as the contact of the drug boss? The paper asks, does he really know the man? Is this Loro just bluffing, wanting to look important? Maybe it is the same one, actually. Well, the player won't comment, uh, but uh, a big story brewing there. The other big story, meanwhile, incidentally, in build this week, is another attack on Sepp Blatter from that man there, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge. Since Kala's previous salvos on corruption at FIFA and the like have had zero effect so far on the Swiss big cheese, he's being driven to increasingly desperate measures, like this week, comparing Blatter to Lothar Matthias. His public image is even worse than the German former midfielders, says a cruel Kala. Gosh, well, there is Matthias, a man whose idea of a hot date has clearly nothing to do with a World Cup in Qatar. Four times happily married now, uh, Lothar, and accompanied here, uh, by the lovely Joanna, 23 years younger than he. Well, somehow he's still seen as a bit of a joke in Germany, but this week Lothar announced that he'll be starring in his very own reality TV programme. No sex or shower scenes, though he specifies a Lothar to a loof uh, to show his loofer. Uh, on that disappointing note, let's finish off today with something from France, where L'Equipe this week unveiled a brand new enquête to wit, referees... Why do they make mistakes? We want them infallible like robots, says L'Equipe, but they get things wrong. Why? Well, the University of Caen have been researching this and they found some interesting things. First off, they're influenced by crowds. Yes, refs give a red card to the home team every 62 games, but they send off a visiting player every 15 games. I don't say which one. Carl Henry, I'm guessing. What else? Well, you're more likely to get a foul if you tackle from right to left as opposed to left to right, because things always look more shocking in that direction. You're also more likely to get a booking if you're tall than if you're short, something my agent's always telling me. And finally, referees get a quarter of all offsides wrong because of something called flash lag, i.e. when asked to localise precisely an object in motion at a given instant, the human brain will systematically place it ahead of its real position, especially if it's Andy Carroll.
Well, scientists say. Uh, that brings us to the end of this week's Euro Paper Roundup. Uh, we'll be back with more in seven days' time, so hopefully we'll see you next Friday. <laughs>